Good morning, this is Larry Edelson with my Uncommon Wisdom Weekly Video Market Update for Thursday, August 11th. Needless to say, we're seeing a lot of action in these markets. It was triggered by the Standard & Poor's downgrade of the U.S. sovereign debt rating from AAA to AA plus late Friday evening. And certainly, while not really unexpected by a lot of investors, it did cause quite a, a bit of turmoil in the markets and quite a bit of gyrations. Um, so we're going to go right to the charts in a few uh, seconds. I do want to make a couple of comments about the S&P downgrade. In the larger scheme of things, it really means nothing at this point because A, it's only Standard & Poor's. Moody's and Fitch have not gone along with the credit downgrade. But most importantly, the agency, if you will, that matters the most when it comes to uh, the credit worthiness of U.S. securities is actually the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve's response to Standard & Poor's has been to uh, basically issue a mandate that there's been no change, I repeat, no change as far as their policies go with respect to U.S. government securities. The Federal Reserve still considers them AAA. Uh, therefore, banks, insurance companies, brokers, and other financial institutions will follow the Federal Reserve's mandate, and no haircuts have been given to those securities used as collateral. Uh, that will change as the sovereign debt crisis gets worse and as our foreign creditors begin to basically uh, fight back with the Federal Reserve and say, hey, enough is enough. We're not listening to you anymore uh, and uh, we're not believing uh, you, Mr. Bernanke, so we're going to start yanking our money out and selling our bonds. At that point, then you will see our creditors take charge and then we will have a very, very big problem indeed. So far, uh, in essence, the Fed remains in charge of the game and our foreign creditors are cooperating more with the Fed than they are with uh, Standard & Poor's. And uh, many of the Asian countries, uh, for instance, over the weekend have reaffirmed their commitment to U.S. securities, uh, sovereign debt securities. So. Uh, I applaud S&P for taking a brave step there. Um, however, uh, it's not getting the results that most had anticipated. Indeed, we've seen the bond market soar as interest rates continue to decline and we see a safety uh, play into U.S. government bonds as stocks get whacked and uh, as Euro, uh, Europe continues to get nailed by the sovereign debt crisis. So we are not at full tilt on the crisis yet by any means, and it will not be dictated by any of the rating agencies. It will be dictated down the road by our foreign creditors. And that's still a bit uh, off, uh, probably a couple of years away. Let's now go to uh, the charts. Gold, obviously, uh, has uh, been uh, rallying quite strongly on the, all the anxiety given uh, the sovereign debt crisis that is enveloping Europe and the United States. We have gotten up to 17.82 and uh, 50 cents as the high so far as I speak in Asian trade. And it looks to me like we're getting a little bit toppy in the gold market in here. Uh, we could still move a little bit higher in the short term, say the next couple of weeks, up to about 18.43. But I do strongly believe we are in at or very near an interim top in gold and we will start to see some kind of consolidation. That's further supported by the fact that silver, which I'll show you in a minute, is really rolling over to the downside again. And the dollar, meanwhile, despite the S&P downgrade, is holding its own as we see investors around the world start to liquidate assets because of a slowing economy and go to cash. Now, uh, let's move on then uh, to silver. Uh, over the last few weeks, as I've been telling you, I, silver would have massive resistance at 42.25, and indeed the high was 42.29 on this move right up here, so far, uh, and we've seen a very sharp uh, pullback uh, to around the 38 and down to uh, just under the 38 dollar level very quickly after we hit 42. So silver's not acting very well. I do believe it's peaked out here. I do believe it will consolidate for a few days. 
Uh, I do still maintain my view that silver is a very dangerous market to be involved in, and I would not touch it until we see a very sharp correction down to the $30 level, perhaps even lower, and that could come very soon. So having said that, please stay alert to my updates on silver. I will let you know when I believe it is uh, clear uh, to buy silver for the long term. In the short term, I would avoid that market uh, completely, uh, unless you are a, a very risk-oriented uh, gambler, so to speak, and you can trade in, let's say, the futures markets where you have plenty of liquidity to get in and out uh, on a very quick notice. Um, now to the dollar. Dollar index, as I indicated previously, uh, hasn't fallen apart on the S&P downgrade. One would expect that that would have happened. Um, it is holding its own. It's still very weak. It's holding this very important support line here. Until we get a move out of, of the dollar that either breaks the support line or begins to take out, uh, let's say, the high from a couple weeks ago at 75, 72 and change, uh, it's hard to say exactly what the dollar will do. My inclination is uh, that cyclically we'll see a rally in the dollar as investors around the world continue to go to cash because of the slumping economies in Europe and the United States. Uh, but it's too early to say for sure. I do know this, that the long-term trend for the dollar is still solidly lower. We're going to see the dollar's purchasing power erode substantially more in the next few years until the world is forced into a new world reserve currency. Let's go immediately to the Dow Industrials. Well, we've certainly gotten the sell-off that I was looking for. We got down to 10, uh, what was the low there, 10,604. Uh, we've bounced since then. We'll probably consolidate for a few days, get back to as high as 11.7. Uh, which would be the underside of this uptrend line here that you see on the chart, which we've broken, and then I believe we will see another leg down. I have achieved on my systems weekly and daily sell signals in the broad stock markets, especially the Dow Industrials and the S&P 500. So uh, prices below 10,000 on Dow uh, are now definitely in the cards, and we're going to continue to see some pretty violent moves in the broad stock markets. I have maintained my position all along. You should not be heavily invested in the broad stock markets at, at this time. Now you know why. I have even recommended in my Uncommon Wisdom column uh, around the 12,000, 11,008 level uh, some positions using inverse ETFs that would be short the S&P 500 and uh, the Dow Industrials. If you acted on those suggestions, I suggest that you continue to hold those positions. I am looking for uh, a move below 10,000 in the Dow in the weeks ahead, possibly as low as Dow 9,000. So having said that, please stay tuned. We're getting some very exciting markets here, and we are entering the autumn period. So as exciting as the summer has been, which is very unusual, I believe the autumn period and the fourth quarter of this year is even going to be uh, a lot more interesting and exciting. Till next week, this is Larry. Have a good weekend.